Hello and welcome to Old Union Church of Christ worship video this morning. I've centered our songs around a theme that I think you will catch as we continue uh, to listen to these songs, also through our scripture reading, and hopefully we'll make you mindful of something that is important to all of us. We're glad you've joined us. Uh, we hope that you will sing along, you will participate in communion. Remember, we also have a sermon and Bible lessons available at www.oldunioncoc.com under the Sermon and Lessons tab there on our homepage, and you can find other videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to Old Union Church of Christ, just under YouTube, search that, and you'll find it. We're glad you've chosen to worship with us today. Since the love of God has shared Christ's blessings on my head, I have made, I have made it, my own. it my own. I will hide it in my heart that it never may depart. It shall rule, it shall rule. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know. You may have picked up on our theme this morning. Our theme this morning has been love. We use that word so flippantly sometimes. You know, we love our pets. We, we love a certain dessert. Uh, we love something. We love another person. I think so many times we forget that God actually defined that word for us. In the scriptures, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, God said, this is what love is. And one of the things we need to remember is it's not butterfly feelings in the stomach. It's not even really an emotion. It's, it's really an acts of service. I want us to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 as we talk about and we gather around this time where God loved us. We often say that God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. What does that mean? What is the word love? How does God define that? Let's read in the scripture and see how God defines it. When God defines love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he begins that chapter and he basically says that love is so important without it that he's nothing. And then he defines it beginning verse 4. You may have heard this read at a wedding. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. And whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. You know, there's a verse we often talk about in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. I think sometimes we forget that it's Jesus who says those words. If any of you have what's called a red letter edition of the Bible where it takes the actual sayings of Jesus and puts them in red, I want you to notice it's Jesus saying that God loved you guys so much that he's giving his son. Now those weren't words Jesus got to just say. Those were words that Jesus was going to live. You know, it's often easy to say something. It's much harder to do it. And when I look at this definition of love, and I think how God has been to us, he has been kind, right? Uh, he has been one that rejoices in truth. He, he's bared things for us. He believes in us. He hopes in us. He's endured a lot because of us. As we gather around this table today, let us remember that we are loved. Even if maybe you are home alone today, or maybe you've been very socially distant because of your situation, I want to remind you that you are loved. Not in a butterfly in your stomach kind of way, not in a romantic love that we often uh, laud in our culture. You're loved in a service, deep, godly way this morning. And as we gather around this table, we are reminded of that love. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, 
we thank you for this bread. This bread which reminds us that you physically came down because you loved us. Words were not just spoken on high, but a life was lived and sacrificed down here with us. Father, we thank you for your Son. We, we thank you for Jesus, for his teachings. We thank you for his touch, that he was here and, and saw what it was like to be on this planet. And Father, we're thankful for that sacrifice, that sacrifice of that Son, because you did love us. And while we often talk about that love, we need to remind ourselves that it came with a price. And that price was the death of Christ on that cross in, in a physical form. As we partake of this bread, may we remember that. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you pray with me as we take the cup? Dear Heavenly Father, with that love came a service and a sacrifice. It wasn't enough for Jesus just to love us. But Father, to follow through with that love, it's that love that holds him to the cross, where that blood is shed for me and for my sins. Even when I have not been very lovable, or when I have not done and said and thought the things that are lovely. Father, I thank you for this blood that cleanses me. I thank you for this blood that washes me. I thank you for the reminder today that I can be clean in your presence and that I can be loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we do love you, and we thank you for your love for us. Father, we thank you that you love us even when we don't act in the ways that you wish we would. Father, you often call us your children because we are. Father, help us to be more mature in that love for you and the understanding of the gift you gave through your son Jesus. 
Father, help us to be more loving of other people. People who don't seem to fit inside the circles that we draw around ourselves. Let us open up our hearts and our eyes and our ears in these times and realize that we are all your children and that, Father, you love us all. You sent your Son for us all. You want to spend eternity with us all. Father, help us to have that kind of love as we look at people, that that we see souls, souls that are in need, maybe souls that are in danger, souls that have been wounded and, and battered and bruised, And, Father, we see people that are lost. And, Father, we pray that they will be found and that we may play a part in that if that is your will. Father, thank you for loving us, even when we appear unlovable. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us here at Old Union Church of Christ. We're located in Castalian Springs, Tennessee, right outside of Gallatin, Tennessee. Some of you may have found us online and live in the local community. We are beginning to have small gatherings on campus. Uh, you can find that information on our webpage, www.oldunionchurchofchrist.com, and you can see the restrictions that are there uh, at this time. It's a great place to find out more about who we are and what's going on. We'd love to get to know some of you who've met us through uh, the online community. I know others are far away, and I hope that you'll continue to join us as we do those things. Remember, we do have Bible lessons and a sermon today uh, that is found on our website under the Lesson and Sermons tab. You can also find that again at YouTube. Just search Old Union Church of Christ, and we put things up there from time to time to help with your spiritual growth and development. We hope that you have a blessed Very deeply stained